In this episode, I'm in the United States with Edwin and explore this massive missile site, which housed the world's first long range anti aircraft missiles. And where a nuclear warhead accidentally exploded. Oh, here it is? Oh my god. Hi, I'm Bob, an urban explorer, and with friends I explore the most amazing abandoned places worldwide. Here we go. <laughs> I'm warming, enjoying it. Warming my hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my coffee. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. It's pretty chilly here. Uh, last week we both had better weather. Yeah. I was in t shirt still. T shirt last week? Yeah. It's hard to imagine when you feel the cold right now. You know, it's like minus five. So. <laughs> Actually, maybe it's not freezing anymore now. No, this morning it was. Yeah, this morning it was for sure. So you've been here before, right? Yeah. Yeah. But didn't check all the buildings. No. So now we can maybe check a little bit more. About two years ago, right at the start of COVID. Because of the Soviet Union's nuclear weapons program and its long range bombers that could reach the United States in 1949, the US Air Force authorized Boeing to do research for a new supersonic anti-aircraft missile. The Michigan Aeronautical Research Center, MARC, was added to the research project just two months later. It resulted in the name Bowmark, combining the names Boeing and Mark. Originally, 52 missile sites were planned, covering most of the major cities and industrial regions in the United States. Later, it was brought down to eight, with an additional two sites in Canada. It was part of the North defense strategy that used jet fighters and missiles as interceptors. So this is the B, Bomark B silos. Okay. These are the newer ones. They are added. The other ones with Bomark There are two a. types of missiles. Yeah. I think, I forgot how many, I think it's 28 or something that are here. Huh. But I think it's a hundred something, more of over a hundred are here. Crazy. So it looks almost like a landing strip, that large, this right? road. Yeah, so see, this one still has like a launcher in it. Yeah, so the roof opens. See, these pistons would retract and then the roof would open up, you know? And then this thing would go stand straight up. And then I think it could go 300 miles or something, these missiles, three, 400. That's a lot. Air defense. For the time, that was really a lot, yes. It's nice that they didn't disassemble it. Yeah, because this makes it really look like a missile uh, launcher. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can clearly see it all the missile. Yeah. Explosive and personnel limits. Warhead, one each. Huh. It's pretty crazy, yeah. Boost case. Yeah. The decay in this one is cool. Green walls. Mm-hmm. Warhead. So there was also an accident with one of these types, one exploded. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe and we see that one. You see, you still see it? Or? They took a day. It was here, here for a long time. They didn't do anything with it. They just fenced it off. And then they demolished it sometime, I think in the early 2000s, they cleaned oh, it up. Okay. Because it was like plutonium still like laying around and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it was bad, yeah. These supersonic Bomark missiles were the world's first long-range, nuclear-capable anti-aircraft missiles. This improved version had a new large solid fuel booster, so it was faster and much safer. It had an increased range of 440 miles and was tested to speeds of Mach 4. It could be launched under 30 seconds. The missiles were housed in individual launch shelters, in which we are now. A system would guide Bomark to incoming targets until the missile's own seeker could lock onto a target and detonate the missile's warhead at the closest point of pass or on impact. That's also all made blast proof, you know? You see yeah, you see no wires, everything is packed. Super yeah. enclosed, yeah, so you probably don't get any sparks in here. Oh yeah, there's a seal in between. Mm -hmm. It's like we saw in the underground power station too. Mm -hmm. yeah. There, you see that? I mean, this oh, yeah. has been shut down for a while, right? Well, we could see trees growing <laughs> in front of the yeah, entrance. Exactly, that doesn't just <laughs> happen, right? Completely overgrown. It's like an adult tree here. We're checking them one by one. Oh, there you can see the control panels. Oh, down there, yeah. 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 Wow. 
Yeah, who knows? This is hydraulic steering? Could be maybe air. Compressed air. Or some kind of fuel, yeah. Boeing designed and built the launch facilities, which took nearly two years to complete. The site was declared operational in 1959, but with only a single working missile. Bringing the rest of the missiles into service took years. When all the missiles were placed, the system was already obsolete. The nuclear threat had moved from manned bombers to the intercontinental ballistic missile. The activations began in 1969, and by 1972, all Bomark sites had been shut down. What does it say? Honeywell, Minneapolis. Regulator. It's crazy that these are wooden doors, actually. Wooden? Yeah, this is wood. Oh. On the outside, they have metal on them. But... <laughs> just metal plating. See, that's just wood. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Basic. Yeah, very basic. <laughs> So these are the A1s, the older ones. Okay. And I think the one that blew up was somewhere past there because you can notice on the right, there's a couple missing. Uh -huh. And I think that's where the one that was blow up was. It makes sense that they took it out, you know? Yeah. I mean, this was the fenced off area then. Yeah. With the gate. Yeah. I think this was something for fuel. Fuel storage? Fuel or air, yeah, this thing. This was some utility the Missiles, building. it's always separated. I don't know if we can get in it. Helium. Helium storage and recovery tank. Who made it? National board number, serial number, shell head. Built October 1958. Okay. Manufactured by Willamette Iron and Steel Corporation, Portland, Oregon. Mr. Cook checked it. There's an air compressor in here. We can go in it. Something inside? Yeah, yeah. I looked in here last time. Oh, oh yeah. I remember it. All right. You can walk around. Let's take a peek. Air control cubicle. See, it was a joy compressor. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brand, Joy. Are we, we're enjoying here. This one is cool. Pressure cooler. Almost looks like wood veins on the right, see? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy how it oxidized, it, how do you call it? Oxidation, yeah. Boeing made that, see? Well seen. Crazy that they made that. This was made in 1959. The Scam Instrument Corporation. USAF aircraft model. It says aircraft model here, look. <laughs> At that time, these missiles were considered pilotless aircraft since their mission was to intercept enemy bombers. To spin this, and this, there would be pistons in here, right? Compressed air. But you can see the motor that's here is in there. Did you see it? I bet you that was the motor for that. Yeah, perhaps it was hanging. Because it was a small part of the front. It could maybe. be, yeah, uh, that it was just yeah. hanging from the compressor. Yeah. I wonder if there's an underground part. Guess not, but who knows. Massive, massive site. Yeah. The site is around 75 acres, 30 hectares big. It's cool, I enjoy big sites actually. Yeah, it's it nice has to just explore and walk around. You know? Yeah. This is nice. Yeah, it looks great to see them lined up like that in the woods. Should be a little bit mindful of that thing there. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. Mm. Oh, see here, this is the other style. You know what this reminds me of? The Star Wing from, from Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, it does. The X-Wing. So this is the first version. Yeah, this is the A, Bowmark A. It's larger. Feels it's like it, right? Feels larger, but it's not a really big difference. No. Maybe the other one was still like here or something. Oh. 
they cut the copper out. Red copper. Oh, you know, the doors, they went this way. They just slid open. And actually, if you look at the roofs, because I was looking at it before, you can kind of see the structures made that they did this. Okay. You see it, those uh -huh. pieces that stick out? You see it there on rails. If you look, you can kind of see the rails underneath yeah, it with wheels. There, there you can see it pretty good. And that whole roof would slide this way. I mean, you got to imagine yeah. the trees are not here, right? Yeah. <laughs> that whole roof would just slide horizontal this way. Yeah. Boom. And those bars are here to uh, keep the balance. Yeah. Gross microwave test. Ramjet, dummy safety. flares, body beacon antenna, missile test connector. Dummy flares too. The first missile version was the IM-99A, which first flew in 1955. This missile was powered by an Aerojet general liquid fueled rocket motor that boosted the missile to near supersonic speed. The missile propelled to its target at Mach 2.5. To a range of 250 miles, 400 kilometers, with two ramjet engines. It's, it's not a missile left, right? But it's the closest thing to having a part of it. <laughs> yeah. I guess they used to put those things over the top of the missiles. You see? Oh yeah, the hood. The hood, yeah, see. <laughs> that was on the tip of the rocket, see. Removed before flight. What kind of stuff is this? Let me feel. It's it. like a soft material, something oh, yeah. like a foam. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> and they were on the floor there, see? So it was on the missile. Then round, right? I wonder how many rockets they actually fired. I don't know. They must have done something as a test, right? Yeah. What does this say here? Barrels. Oh, that's the stuff that they had to put in the back of it. Oh, really? Liquid? Decontamination something. New Cumberland General Depot, US Army, New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. So that was probably that stuff that they had to put in the yeah. back of those things. And I think those yellow things were on the back of it, see? Prior to each installation of cover. I don't know, but I'm sure that was on the back of the missile, probably. Yeah. Oh, this is also nice. Adjust it or what? I know. I'm actually surprised that so many stuff is still standing here. Right? You would expect they would totally strip it. Check out my coffee table books, in which you can find the most amazing abandoned places worldwide. Many of these places you don't see on this channel. But some have a QR code and you can see the adventure behind the picture. My books are on sale right now. You get 20% discount. Check the link in the description for more info. One major issue with the Bowmark IM-99A missile was the main booster's highly corrosive liquid rocket fuel. This fuel could not be stored on board the missile and had to be loaded before launch. A process that added nearly 2 minutes to the missile's launch time. It got replaced by the B-type which we saw before. This type had a solid fuel booster, which made it faster and safer. These missiles never saw action, but there was one accident in 1960, as said before. An explosion in a helium tank caused a fire in a liquid-fueled, nuclear-tipped Bomark missile, which contaminated the nearby area with plutonium. From the back, it almost looks like a jet fire. The little side building, see? It's the first one which is open. Yeah, they're all closed. Very cool. Oh yeah, control panels. What does it say? See, launch countdown time. Oh, launch nice. status, take off. Wow. If, this is, if this is on, it's taking off. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> Ready storage, warm up, missile operating time. Missile power on count. 250, is this ours? Maybe it was on for 250 hours, I don't know.
I had total orange. <laughs> Imagine. Fire up, cancel. Command, missile interlock. Hydraulic pressure, missile hydraulic pressure. And this one here, nice panel. Oh, you could take it out. Manual test sequence. <laughs> missile sustaining air outside <laughs> limits. Cool. Still a lot of electronical parts. Oh, it's definitely cool. Look how cool this detail is. That's a nice little bottom. It would be a nice doorknob. It's really narrow, this place. Yeah, probably they never used it, so. Oh, okay. this was just a heater for in there. It was temperature controlled. Yeah. Is there anything here? That's Looks like good. the helium thing, which we saw before. Cordate bladder ring. Air accumulator. See there on the wall? That's, huh. that's for something with air, see? Ah, yeah. Air High pressure. High pressure air accumulator. Yeah. Didn't they for rocket fuel? Don't they need to like mix all kind of things together? Yeah, they do. Yeah, right. That, that's what they also did in the Titan One missiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they mix stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Tells you how this air system works, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. GPS coordinates. Interesting. Between 1957 and 1964, Boeing built 570 production A and B missiles and another 130 for various tests. Because the nuclear threat changed from primarily bombers to ballistic missiles, the air defense missile system was no longer necessary, and on October 1st, 1972, the last Bowmark was retired from service. Nice. Arrived at the big building. Maybe the powerhouse. That one is checking. Are you showing some of the cactuses on the ground here? Oh yeah, shit, I should, yeah. Look here, here is a nice patch. <laughs> People could think we're in it's Arizona. A, the prickly pear. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Whoa. Oh, wow. It feels like you're Massive. on the edge. Oh yeah, the razor wire here. It's pretty dark in here. Pristine condition. Made by the Chicago Pneumatic Company. Okay. The panels are cool too. Yeah. Nice diesel generators. Really cool. See, it has like the name on the side of it in the bottom there. In Chicago, you can kind ah, of see it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, this is cool. Just a regular control panel. System chilled water pumps. So some water pumps, pumps do water pumps, yeah. Nice. Condensed water. Oh, here's also another panel. 
Oh, hoop rims. Boiler circulation control. The minigun is a lot faster than the old M17A. <laughs> US government. Secret. Oh. Power unit was on fire on arrival inside hangar doors. Fire was extinguished at five gallons of CB. <laughs> fire has reported violation of base two aircraft evacuation from fire during incident. Wow. Oh, interesting. Theory of combustion. So it's all about putting fires These out. These examples, yeah. It's nothing with a rocket in here, no? There's still a date somewhere. 1972. Wow. This is abandoned for a while, man. Yeah. Damper control. <laughs> small ones. Yeah. But yeah, also small engines, of course. Lamont forced recirculation generators. Pretty cool, man. Yeah. yeah. And the decay on it is also cool. Also just nice details like the lettering and everything. Oh, three boilers. Oh, nice with that little box on it. We continue to explore some more utility buildings. Looks like most of it got stripped in here though. Giant space, industrial something. Yeah. Cool. Could have been workshops or something. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, something look. in there, it's yeah. a yellow thing there. Yeah. Maybe it is something for it to carry a missile. Oh, yeah. Because that's the shape of a missile. Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. Rolling right material equipment. Oh, wow, look. This is definitely for a missile. It had different sections. Nice. Dolly position diagram with wings attached, fuel tank empty. Fuel tank full. See, it tells you yeah. what you got to do in different See configurations. That. Epic. Right. Look at this door, this massive door that's in here. Yeah, foldable. Folding door, yeah. All the way up. And that looks like there might, yeah, no crane in here. Or is there a crane? Oh, there's a there. crane. Yeah. That's the crane there, yeah. Massive door. Yeah. Is that storage inside? It's like... Oh yeah, this was some kind of info, see? It said flight. Ah oh, yeah, power flight. Maybe this is where they kept records, somehow. Yeah. Oh, something important in here, that's for sure. <laughs> power panel. Hmm. Still kind of curious that they left like little bits and pieces in here actually, right? Yeah, yeah that makes it really nice. Yeah. This does not belong in here, I no, think. No, it's just dumped in here. Maybe, uh, yeah. They look out of place, kind of. Looks like it's just put in here. I think we've seen most of it now.
Can you imagine? A couple Abraham stangs in here. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> from the part which goes on the ground, but unfortunately it's flooded. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment and a thumbs up if you liked the episode. And subscribe to our channel to see our future adventures. See you next week.